the path toward victory is virtually impossible. I have concluded that this battle for the Democratic nomination will not be successful. And so today, I am announcing the suspension of my campaign. It wasn't that long ago that Senator Bernie Sanders seemed unstoppable. The independent from Vermont was leading the Democratic primary season, and the rest of the pack was worried. I like Bernie. We came in together to the Senate, but I do not think that this is the best person to lead the ticket. Sanders left his mark by moving the Democratic Party to the left. And as former Vice President Joe Biden said, he's, quote, created a movement. We have now won the Nevada caucus. Sanders cemented his lead in Nevada after winning 51 percent of the state's Democratic Latino voters. At the same time, President Trump focused on bad-mouthing Sanders' brand of socialism. They're becoming the party of socialism, late-term abortion, open borders, and crime. The Sanders campaign continued to be a fundraising machine, smashing national records for donations. And for a moment after the Nevada caucuses, the senator had stretched the Democratic Party even further to the left. But by the South Carolina primary, the party had snapped right back. Biden and Sanders outlasted 26 other contenders, from moderate Pete Buttigieg to almost radical Elizabeth Warren. In his two runs for the White House, Sanders transformed the platforms of every one of them. His criticism of the student debt crisis turned parlor talk complaints about never-ending paybacks to Sally May into a presidential discussion. It is simply not acceptable that our younger generation, through no fault of their own, will have a lower standard of living than their parents, more debt, lower wages, and less likelihood of owning their own homes. That is why this proposal completely eliminates student debt in this country. Sanders also forced a conversation about wealth inequality, with both him and Warren rolling out plans to tax the ultra-rich. And then you also have three people owning more wealth than the bottom half of American society. That is a moral and economic outrage. He brought criminal justice reform to the front of the party's platform. I do believe that even if they are in jail, they're paying their price to society, but that should not take away their inherent American right to participate in our democracy. Even party opponents agreed on ending the death penalty, abolishing private prisons, and decriminalizing or legalizing marijuana. And Sanders changed the conversation entirely on health care. Together, we are going to end the international embarrassment of the United States of America, our great country, being the only major nation on earth not to guarantee health care to all as a right. That is going to end. It might. Every major candidate in the 2020 race has pushed for a more universal health care system, and the majority of Americans support Sanders' single-payer option. The senator got endorsements from across the board. Still, his gamble didn't pay off. Sanders couldn't expand the voter base, and he failed to make inroads with Black voters. And while Sanders is not likely going to run again, his politics brought in a new class of Democrats. And now Biden, the de facto nominee, is having to run on a less moderate platform to secure Sanders supporters. His policy promises are more liberal than Obama's or really any other DNC nominee in the party's history. Of course, the Democratic Party still isn't the working class party of Sanders' dreams. But after two presidential runs from the most left-wing candidate to enter mainstream politics, it's a little bit closer.